What up players, Wobots Tay back up in this mood. Today we're going to continue painting Lewis's pimp ride up and um, as you can see after filming part one, one of my zombie horse powers decided to go on strike. He broke off while I was trying to paint this metal uh, joint here, which actually I, I was right about to glue him back in when I realized, you know what, I think it'll be better this way, than I, now I can paint him separately, I can get into detail for this guy in the back even better. So, fate and fortune work in mysterious ways, my friend. Zzz, my friends out there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm uh, going to show you a little bit of how I how I thin down and, and use my paints and also I want to show you that when you use your clamshell to make a wet palette, this is the wet palette I used in part one which I filmed uh, I think two days ago. As you can see the paint dried, the water dried and all you have to do, easy cleanup, take your dried napkin out and your clamshell is ready for another wet palette. So this is why I love using uh, parchment paper and um, na or, or there are no parchment paper, just napkins and water because it's just so much more, so much more convenient than having to wet paints and put the paints right on the plastic because the plastic or the paint does not come off the plastic, if you know what I mean. So I'm gonna put some water back on and tear off piece of a napkin and I'm using like any old napkin when you don't have parchment paper I'm using napkin from uh, right now I'm using a napkin from a uh, Happy Meal I love me some McDonald's Happy Meals which is probably not good oh my gosh did you hear about that girl in the UK who collapsed because she ate nothing but chicken McNuggets for her entire life I read the story on, <laughs> on the internet and I was like Wait, her mom gave her chicken McNuggets when she was two years old and she said she loves it so much that she doesn't want to eat anything except chicken McNuggets and as a parent, you thought that was a good idea? Uh, what? Try not to get into like too much political world stuff. That's why I don't talk about my political views or whatever on my channel. <clears throat> but that was just too funny. If I was a parent and my kid was like, I love chicken McNuggets, I was like, good for you. Now eat some vegetables. There, so there's no real water at the bottom of, of my paint palette. If I turn it over, water doesn't leak out of it. But there is enough water that the top is just a little bit damp. So when I'm making a paint palette and I'm using a color, let's say I'll talk about in our next step what we're going to do is we're going to use a foundation color, Adeptus Battle Gray, to paint the clothes on some, oops, on some of our models, Adeptus Battle Gray. So what I would do is I would take the paint after shaking it up, take it right out of the pot. This is it straight out of the pot. Then I would put it down here. Make sure you get some, some of that thinned down paint onto your brush, just like this. Then I would wipe it off once or twice. I just wipe it once, twice off on a clean napkin. And that is what I would use. So, let me show you the kind of consistency you get with... <laughs> can't really tell because I just realized the plastic I'm using is um, primered to look almost just like Adeptus Battle Gray but you'll see that it goes on smooth there's no there is no um, stroke lines really when you when you use a, a wet palette it's a huge help and gets rid of a lot of that and then the great thing is that all you have to do is dip your paintbrush back onto the wet palette by then you have a good idea for how the paint flows and all you have to do is start painting it onto the model and um, and then spread it out so you don't really have to wipe it completely clean this, uh, any subsequent times unless you get too much liquid on your brush you just do it that first time or I do it that first time so that I can get a feel for how much paint needs to go on the, the model it's a lot easier to add paint than to 
than to clean up a, a mistake. You can still do it, and I encourage you cleaning up any of your mistakes, but it's easier to get a gauge for your paint flow and your water, I think, beforehand, the first time you do it. Are you guys seeing this? This in focus. So that was a response to Private Pokemon 1 who asked if he could see how I thin down and use my paints in one of my previous videos. Okay. So why are we using Adeptus Battle Gray? Because we're also going to be painting the, the zombies clothes or scraps of leftover clothing with Chaos Black and Mechrite Red to show that they used to be state troopers or just citizens in Sylvania where the vampire counts or the, the von Karsteins anyways have their their headquarters where they originate from I think these zombies are so awesome, so well made, such a great update. I kind of wish they would just make, redo the zombies box set with this level of detail and um, it's just really fantastic. Okay, so we're using Adeptus Battle Gray, you don't have to, at this point I'm, I'm not going to call, I'm not going to paint all of their clothes with Battle Gray because like I said, we're going to be alternating different colors, so some of them are going to get red pants, some of them are going to get red shirts. So, now I'm going to really decide, okay, what do I want to stay gray? A lot of the reds on the models are going to come from their horrific battle wounds and gory, bloody bits, so we don't want to have <clears throat> too much red areas. Oh, see, that's too much water there. Sometimes you can tell when the, the paint that you're using gets really thin on your palette. All you want to do is take a little bit more paint from your pot and dip it in. Oops. Okay, so if I'm giving him gray pants, then obviously this guy's shirt needs to be gray because he's on the front and he would have red pants. So if he has red pants, that would mean the guy back here would have this part under his helmet thing be red and would mean that he would get gray cloth. He's also got some armor. You'll also notice that yesterday after <clears throat> after I uh, finished filming, I went back and I finished painting up all the metallic bits. There's so much, so much metal. I kind of regret not doing it on camera, but there's so much bolt gun metal that you'll need to paint. For example, the rims of the wheels, the metal, um, I don't know what you call the braces, brackets on, the, on all the wood pieces. Down here, what I decided to do was paint the center beam and then the uh, these metal beams on the sides and just along the sides you have so much metal detailing that you're gonna have to paint silver that uh, the first time I, I I missed it I honestly missed a lot of it okay so I'm gonna paint some of these torn clothing in gray the reason I'm using gray instead of another bright color besides red and, and the reason we're also going to be using black is because we want our color to stand out. Or I do anyways. So a lot of their hair is going to be black, so I'm not going to use too much black because I want you, the, the, the viewer to see that uh, if you see black, it's someone's hair. So 
red also at this point, if you put it in this mass of bodies, could be mistaken for uh, flesh or torn, gory bits, which we're going to be taking a lot of time to focus on in the next section of the video. So um, I'm really going to be mindful and I'm, I'm going to try and focus on painting. Whoops, got to keep better track of my time. Sorry about that, guys. Um, what was I saying? I don't know. I'm just painting the cloth, painting the cloth gray. I am leaving the... Uh, I'm gonna really not paint any reds except for gory, disgusting, bloody bits. And the black, like I said, which the camera might, might have gotten, might not, the black is gonna be reserved for hair. So... I might also do some spot um, hair colors of blonde or no gingers. I don't think there would be any gingers. Maybe brown hair. I actually no. I don't want to do brown hair because the the wood. Ooh, excuse me. The wood is going to be brown. So, I mean, since the wood is already brown, what am I talking about? Ah, oh, get out of the way, dead body. So much stuff for the camera to focus on. trying to paint last night. I was trying to catch up on some other stuff I was doing and um, my neighbors were having this huge party and got pretty rowdy. So, pile would be so much easier to paint if I wasn't a knucklehead and if I didn't glue it on. That's okay, live and learn. If I, like I said, if I do another one of these guys, definitely gonna be smarter about it next time. And then you've got these two little guys down here, like, hey, wait for us. I think I'm gonna... Hmm. Nah. I, I, yeah. They're gonna have gray clothes so that we can use red to paint all their bloody arm stumps. <coughs> Lewis is totally stoked. I think, I think that's, that should do it, should do it, okay. So the next step is going to be, ooh, too much. The next step is going to be that we are going to paint um, hair. So hair is going to be mostly chaos black. So I'm gonna take the chaos black out and Put it on my wet palette here. Give it some chance to mix. There we go. And then that's what I'm gonna use. <clears throat> so start with this guy up here. Something you're gonna get used to the more you the more you paint is just really easily turning your models all different directions and angles. The more you do that, the more you turn your models around in different 
positions so that you can make sure you hit all the details, I think the, the better you grow as an artist. You look at things differently than from straight on. Very severe widow's peak this guy is going to have. And we'll go back and fix you later, my friend. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, tr I'm trying to keep an eye on the monitor. And uh, I can just tell this is probably not going to be the easiest tutorial to follow because there's so many different things to paint. Also, I just realized why we shouldn't paint brown hair too much is because there are a lot of rats on this corpse cart, which is disgusting, but we want the rats to stand out as brown, so as being brown, so we're not going to paint. Man, couldn't some of these guys have been bald? Lewis, how is it that you've picked corpses for your cart that have the thickest hair? Couldn't help but paint around by picking some bald guys. I love hairy men! You probably shouldn't say that when you're cruising around looking for chicks. Why not? I'm just saying. Igor, you wanna tell him why not? Because it sounds quite circumspect, master. Circumspect is a good word. We'll just leave it at that. So much awesome detail. There's more detail in this corpse pile, corpse cart, than in like the whole zombie kit that GW produces right now. Mantic zombies. Okay. If if I were to get uh, zombies from another company that wasn't GW, Mantic definitely. They've got guys like popping out of the ground. You don't even have to build build them whole up. Zombies and Mantic Ghouls, I think, are really good. But like I've been saying to some people who've been commenting on the skeletons, I can't really get into their skeletons. I don't know what it is about them. I mean, they're cheap, which is great. They're cheaper than GW. Totally support, like, alternatives if GW is going to keep marking and jacking up the prices. Especially in Australia, those poor guys. But, um... Man, I, I, I don't know, I just, I, I don't like the look of the Mantic Skeletons for some reason. I think they don't fit the gothic horror look that I think zombies, or uh, vampire counts are kind of like priding themselves on. I think that's what it is, yeah? They don't, they look, they look too nice. They look like nice skeletons. the hair on uh, Prince Valiant and his buddy back here. <laughs> nice haircut. Guys back here. Okay, I still got about a minute in this clip. the skin areas of these guys and uh, 
finish painting up the black hair and then we'll come back and start looking at painting um, other pieces on this corpse card. Alright, the last thing we're going to be doing in this phase, uh, something fun, let's, let's end with something fun. We're going to start painting in all the gore. So, all the bloody gory bits. We're going to be using red gore, coincidentally enough. And, there is so much, so much places that you can paint this gory red color. So I'm going to show you an example with one of my, one of my zombies here, one of our um, zombies that are pulling the cart. So I, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be looking for any rips and tears in the skin. And then I'm going to paint those in as best I can. Hello? Hello? Yep. Oh, okay. Yeah, that sounds good. Nah, not really. Anyway, it's fine. Hey, thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Mmm, pizza. So here, we're painting the inside of the fleshy bits of his scalp that have come opened. There, I just turned my phone on silent. Oops! Also, in the back, in any rips and tears in the clothing, that's another place where you can paint your red gore, as well as any broken off limbs. So this is just a preliminary painting of all the blood and gore. Once we do our washes and we come back for the final for the final application of all that paint and stuff, we'll, we'll really go in for some brighter gore highlights, but this is just, uh, you know, the beginning part of it. So with this guy, you have to decide what you want to be gore and entrails and blood and guts and what you want to be his, like, his jacket or his shirt that got ripped open. So, that's what I did. You paint one as whatever color you're using for clothes, clothing. For example, a Dectus Battle Gray for me. And the rest you'll paint in red or Just find wherever the skin or the clothes rip or tear open. And paint that in red gore. Now 
we're gonna get to work. Well, let's let's save the corpse pile till last. Let's work our way there with these drivers in the front. Oh, oh man, look at that. I love this guy's arm. His uh his flesh is all gnawed off at the forearm. Sick. Whoever painted this or whoever molded this. Sculpted this I mean. Whoever sculpted this model is sick. I love it. Oh, they really went to town with this guy, huh? This guy is all jacked up. Lewis! Pin out your ride, Lewis. I can't wait till the lady she me bouncing on twenty twos. Started on our corpse pile. I only got two minutes left on my for this clip. I'm gonna try and get as much as I can done before it shuts off. doesn't know where to look. It's like, what? 
what? What am I? What am I looking? What? What is? Oh, what? So there's only really those on, you've got two huge holes in the corpses on the, on the cart itself. This guy on the top and the other guy on the opposite side down here. You can also paint inside there. Okay, I'm gonna finish up here and um, I'll show you what all this looks like with the, the blood and the gore ready for the next step or the next part in our video which is gonna be painting the rats.